So a very good afternoon to everybody out there in the world of PPMA and beyond, and uh, welcome to uh, this webinar in our series of Spark and Learn for the um, springtime. Yeah, and uh, last year I had the privilege of uh, coming across um, Jane Basley, who was amazing in terms of the work that she's doing, in terms of encouraging us to have a greater um, interest and connection with our physical being. You know, one of the things which we have heard about um, in these months of uh, lockdown is the fact that we're not moving around and um, yeah, just moving our bodies sufficiently. This is not physical exercise in terms of running and swimming, you know, but just general movement. So I thought it would be a great thing to give you some headline, headlines and tips from the amazing Jane. And so I invited Jane to this program. So welcome, Jane. Great to have you here today. Thank you. Pleasure. And, uh, one question that I've been asking um, all of our guests that have joined us, I'm putting you on the spot here because this is, I haven't given you any forewarning of this. <laughs> Thank you for so, that. Uh, the importance of, uh, you know, finding something that we can appreciate from each and every day, no matter how tough or hard those times might be. Mm -hmm. So what is the one thing that you have appreciated or valued from, let's say, your past week, however small or big that might be? Actually, it's really been the opportunity to move my body because I suppose I, I think I go into a state of mindfulness when I go and do some of my mobility and my exercise work. Um, and I can just concentrate on making the most of my body to look after what I want to do during the day. And I really appreciated that. Great. I love it. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. So with no further ado from me, I'm going to hand over to Jane. The floor is yours, or the Thank screen you. is yours, I should say. Right. And uh, I look forward to seeing you um, at the end of the programme. Lovely. OK, then. Thank you, Lethem, for the intro. Um, and it's been lovely to have been invited along to talk to you today. So just a few words about me. Um, I'm passionate about movement and I work with people to help them find the younger person inside themselves. And I typically work with clients on a one to one basis who are looking and feeling older than they should or that they would like to. And I've always had a passion for health and well-being, but there have been many periods in my life, um, especially in the corporate world in my career, when I've not been as active as I should have been. And I've learned from that experience as well. So when I set up Body Maneuvers, it really was with a simple goal of getting people to move more. So um, today I'm going to cover three things with you. I'm going to talk to you about why daily movement is so important in our lives and you know what's behind it why do people keep talking about the reasons that we need to move and how does it help to keep us healthy i'm going to move on and talk about and give some practical suggestions as to what we can do to move more and this isn't about being great at sport or necessarily taking up a sport it's about the real value in everyday movement that we have and then finally and this last one is about habits um, and it can be about movement and habits, but it can be about how do we actually create different habits in our daily lives? What's the process if we want something to be different for us um, to actually be successful at creating a new habit? However, before we get into all of that, I'm going to um, give a short history lesson um, to begin with, because this largely sits behind what's going on for us at the moment, really. And the fact is our bodies were built to move. We have a stone age body, that has not really been designed for 21st century living. And there's a part of our brain which is responsible for higher functions like language. And believe it or not, it's roughly the same size today as it was 200,000 years ago. Now our ancestors were very active. They hunted and scavenged for food and life was very hard for them. So 200,000 years ago, we evolved to be physically active when it was necessary, we had to live we have to, had to be socially, we had to be active to live. It was also socially rewarding for us. But otherwise we would find times to rest. We would avoid unnecessary exertion. But things are so different today. We don't have to hunt and search for food. And we've actually eliminated the connection between moving and hunting, food gathering and actually needing to survive. Everything can be delivered to us 24 seven. We have got the most amazing labour-saving devices. We've got non-iron shirts. We've got vacuums that hoover on their own, if you've got one of those. We've got the personal computer. We've got the smartphone, and we have millions of apps to amuse us both day and night. 
Now, when we do move, we use our muscles to help us achieve movement. And they are, the muscles are one of the most important components in our body. And in fact, we would be unable to speak or express our thoughts if we didn't use our muscles. And they take us from some of the really simple things like talking and blinking, which we do without thinking and automatically, to some of those really complex movements like running and lifting. So our muscles are really important. They play a vital role in supporting our overall health and well-being. And they also have the ability to store the glucose and the carbs, which is the fuel that we need to use when we move. Now it's normal to sit, you know, and actually our hunter-gatherers also sit, mainly on the ground. Um, but the problem is sitting too much, and that's where we are right now, especially during leisure time. So when we do move, we turn our muscles on, which are the largest organ in the body. So what can we do? So there are actually six key areas um, that our bodies will benefit from if we do move daily. So first of all, there are our muscles, and we've actually got about 600 muscles in our body. And on average, they contribute to about 40% of our total body weight. And those 600 muscles actually help to join up the 226 bones that exist in our skeleton. So 40% is a pretty good proportion of our body weight. And if we want to, we can always increase that through exercise. And we do want to maintain our muscle strength throughout our lives, because unfortunately, our muscle mass does decrease as we age. So actually, that moving and doing some exercise can help to limit this. And it can help us to keep our independence as we get older. Exercise also will help with our bones. So we do need dense and strong bones if we want to avoid things like osteoporosis. And then we move on to joints. So if we think about our knee joints, our hip joints and our shoulder joints, around all of those we have something called a range of movement. So our range of movement around our joints is absolutely key. And it can affect some of the really simple things in our lives like being able to put a jacket or a coat on by yourself or needing help from somebody else. The brain benefits from movement. So not only through helping to regrow structures, but also from the feel good hormones that are produced when we move, like dopamine and serotonin. And then finally, there's our heart and lungs. So our heart works hard for us all day. Um, the easier that we make our heart work, the longer it will last us. And the same goes for our lungs. So before we actually kind of move on to movement, let's start with posture, because I'm a great believer that actually good movement starts with good posture. And what is posture, actually? So it's the position in which you hold your body and limbs when standing, sitting or lying down. And actually to have good posture means that you need to be aware of always holding yourself in a way that puts the least strain on your back, whatever you're doing. And it really is something we should expect to work on our whole lives. So when we do have good posture, whether it's when we sit, stand, or have good form when doing activities, we use less energy and can, can maintain more easily the balance that our body craves. It always looks for something called homeostasis. So when our bodies and sorry, when our bones and joints are in correct alignment, it allows the muscles to be used as they're intended. So we have less tiredness and fatigue and more energy. The muscles don't have to work so hard to do what they're supposed to do. Now, the extent that we sit, whether it's for work, to watch TV or play video games, eat or sit in meetings, is really much greater than it ever has been. And the last 12 months have taken their toll. And actually our bodies weren't built for this amount of limited movement. So what are some of the benefits of good posture? So at a very simple level, it's fewer headaches. But we may find if we've been working from home that one of the consequences of laptop use and mobile phone use is where we place our head and we can end up with something called forward head posture. Other people might know it as tech neck. This can contribute to tension headaches due to increased muscle tension in the back of the neck. Now the human head weighs between 10 and 12 pounds. When it's actually sitting on our shoulders with our ears aligned over the tops of our shoulders, it feels as though it weighs nothing because it's balanced. However, for every one inch the head moves forward away from this neutral position, it can increase the weight of the head on the spine by an additional 10 pounds. So if your head is moved forward by about three inches, that will be an additional 30 pounds of strain on your shoulders and the muscles in your shoulders. 
So if we correct our posture by keeping our head back, our ears in line with our shoulders and moving, we can actually reduce muscle tension and also reduce our headaches. We'll have less tension in the shoulders and the neck. So as I said, a forward head posture puts strain on the upper back, the shoulder and the neck areas. We have a set of muscles that go across the top of our shoulders called the trapezius, and they can become longer and weaker. And the muscles we have at the front, called our pecs, the ones at the top of the front of our chest, become short and tight. So what we end up with is an imbalance in our upper body. And this can lead to other issues when we do something that we've not done for a long time. And it might be as simple as reaching for something in a high cupboard. We can improve our lung capacity. So when we do have a forward head posture, it actually reduces our lung capacity by about 30%. When we do slouch, our lungs become compressed. When we sit and stand taller, our lungs have more space to expand. So actually having some good posture improves our breathing. We can get a reduction in low back pain. Sitting or standing in a slouched position for per long periods of time stresses our lower back, and it can actually put pressure on the discs, the ligaments and the muscles. And finally, we can get some improved circulation and digestion. So if you sit in a slouch position for a long period, it compresses the vital organs. Our circulation becomes poorer and our organs won't work as well as they're supposed to. Our body requires a healthy blood flow, which requires proper alignment and avoiding positions which cramp circulation, for example, like crossing your legs. So here's one for the ladies. Crossing your legs can also lead to varicose veins. So, what can we actually do to improve our working posture? Um, move frequently to begin with, ideally every 20 to 30 minutes. And I know that's going to be really hard at times for the Zoom calls that we're on that seem to be endless and go from one hour to the next. But actually, if we want to look after ourselves, which is really important in this time, we do need to move frequently. Other things we can do are like walking and standing. Um, while we're on the phone. A great thing which I invested in actually was a standing desk recently. Um, if that's not possible, then actually find a higher level on which to place your laptop. That might be some books or it might be a crate, but actually standing and working in something that's a good posture is absolutely key to um, helping how the body works. If you do sit down, keep your feet flat on the floor, your hips close to the back of the chair, and then uh, you'll screen an arm's length away from you. Sit up straight and make sure that you don't lean to, lean to one side, again because that distorts the muscles in the body and it provides tiredness. So a general rule of thumb is if you feel tired and can't keep a straight sitting position, then change your working position. And it would be like anything that we're holding. If we were holding a weight for a long period of time in one arm, our arm would become tired. We would put the weight down and we would do something else. So actually, when we are sitting working, it's really important to keep moving so our bodies get time to adjust. I'm also not a great fan, believe it or not, of um, ergonomic chairs, as um, whilst on the one hand, they're absolutely great for us because they can actually really help our sitting position. They can make it more comfortable to stay and sit for longer. So save your money, um, buy a 10 or 15 pound stool from Ikea, and that will do you just as well. So um, we want to move more each day, but we don't necessarily know what to do. We might not have time for exercise or sport. We might not like exercise or sport that much. So we can go on and think about something called NEAT. And it's got a great title list, Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, but it's a really simple concept. So a little bit of background, first of all. So for any movement in the body to take place, the body uses chemical energy to convert it into the mechanical work that our muscles and skeleton needs to do. And as we know, we want to use as many calories as we can every day being active. And if we eat the right balance of food, that helps too. But we also know, as we keep getting reminded, that any calories eaten and not used will get stored. But one of the things that actually helps us use up these calories is muscle contraction. It's one of the big uses of energy in the body. And the more muscle tissue you have relative to your body weight, the more energy you will use. The more you move your body, the more calories your muscles require to burn as energy. So NEAT, very simply, 
is the energy the muscle contraction requires to move the body. Now, NEAT is everyday life movement. It's nothing special. It's something that we all know. It is the energy we use for everything we do that's not sleeping, eating, or sports like exercise. So it will include walking, moving around generally, fidgeting, working, performing tasks briskly, and so on. Even small trivial tasks raise the amount of energy your body uses and therefore raises our metabolic output. It's the accumulation of all the energy used by the body by moving throughout the day. But the one thing it doesn't include is sitting. So if you do need, you could increase your metabolic output by anything from 15 to 35 percent, meaning you can actually use more calories during the day. Now, when we were traveling to work more, we moved around an office, we went to get teas, we went to get coffees, lunch, etc. And we had something in our daily activity called incidental activity. We just did some of these things without really thinking about it. And this may have disappeared for many people. So what can we do instead? So the key question to ask is how can I make my day a neat day? So it's about looking for all those opportunities in and around the house, where most of us might be now, to actually find something to do. So if you live in a house with some stairs, what I used to do was keep a big pile of things at the bottom of the stairs and go, right, when I go up at some point, I'm going to take the 10 items here. But now what I do is carry everything that belongs upstairs at home, upstairs at the time that it needs to go there. So I've done another 30 steps to go upstairs and also come down again. Don't ask anyone else to pass you anything. Get up and go and get it yourself. When you sit down for the evening, now this is a key one. When you do sit down for the evening, leave your phone in the kitchen and the remote control by the TV. So it will stop you from getting text net on your phone. If you do need to use it, you can actually get up and go and get it. And the same goes for the remote control by the TV. And if you're feeling really energetic, actually just getting up and down from the floor about 10 times a day will really help your mobility. Sounds slightly strange, but it is um, of a huge benefit. So just think about everything you do, now say to yourself, how could you make this neat? So the next thing I'm going to go on and mention, and this is very strongly linked with movement, is actually about our immune system and our lymph system. And I think probably all of us over the last nearly 12 months now, I've heard so much due to the pandemic and due to coronavirus about our immune system. But what is it exactly and what is it that we can actually do ourselves to help look after our immune system? So our immune system is a complex network of cells, organs, proteins and antibodies. And without it, we wouldn't have a way to fight harmful things that enter our body from the outside. And it does, in fact, have three main tasks. First of all, to fight disease causing germs. Secondly, to recognise and neutralise harmful substances if we take them in from the environment. And then thirdly, to fight disease causing changes in the body, such as cancer cells. So it's absolutely vital to us. Now, in conjunction with our um, immune system, we have a lymph system. And that also helps defend against bacteria and other intruders. And ironically, it's the most undervalued of all the body systems. And it's the one we don't really talk about. But actually, if it stopped working, we would die within 24 to 48 hours. Now, our lymph system is made up of lymph nodes, and they're about the size and shape of the pea. And all of us have about between five and 700 of them throughout the body. They're quite deep inside our body, and they're clustered around some of those areas where we've got our rotational joints. So it might be the chest area. So for example, the lungs and the heart. We've also got them under the arm and in the groin. But actually also every tissue in our body has immune cells stationed in them or circulating through them. And they're roving for signs of attack all the time. Now, some signs of the lymph system underperforming might include headaches, brain fog, lack of energy, recurrent sore throats, and a reduced ability to fight infection. However, unlike the cardiovascular system that has a dedicated pump in the form of our heart muscle, the lymph system has no central pump. Now, because of this, the fluids tend to move comparatively slowly in the body. Our lymph fluid is pushed along as we breathe and move. It relies on gravity and pressure, which is created when we move around. So it's another reason why we need to be moving. 
So it's mainly the contraction of our muscles as we move that squeeze the lymph vessels that creates lymphatic circulation. Therefore, moving in general stimulates the flow of lymph fluid, giving a tremendous boost to the immune system. Inactivity can significantly restrict lymph flow and can lead to a buildup of waste and toxins, leading to inflammation and disease. And that is absolutely what we're looking to avoid right now. So there are certain things that we can actually do um, to optimize our lymph system. Many of these you may be familiar with already. We've already talked a little bit about um, sitting properly so that we can breathe, making sure that we stay hydrated. Any form of exercise and movement is great. Um, if you're fortunate enough to know somebody in your family currently who can give you a massage, ask them for one. Even a foot massage can really help. Yoga and any sort of movement. So some really simple ones might be neck rolls, pelvic tilts, leg circles, shoulder shrugs, anything where we can do that we've got um, lymph cells or immune cells will actually really help with keeping our immune system working. So I'm now going to move on, having looked at different ways that we can move, um, we might be thinking, well, okay, then that all sounds great, but I've got a busy day at the moment. Um, I've got so much to do, and you're talking about some creating some new habits. So how might I do that? So what I'm going to talk to you about for the next few minutes is actually how we can create habits, not just around movement, but around anything else that we might want to do in our lives. So to start with, what is a habit? So it's something that we do automatically without thinking about it. And if you just reflected on your morning so far, there are many habits that you've done already, whether it may be from getting, getting up out of bed, putting the kettle on, brushing your teeth first thing. We all do these sorts of things automatically. Now they can be a double-edged sword. Now I prefer not to think about good habits versus bad habits, but more about what are those things that we do that take us towards the person that we want to be and how we want to be seen. Now, our identities emerge out of our habits. So, for example, if you make your bed each day, you might embody the identity of an organised person. If you study maybe a topic or the Open University for an hour and a half each day, um, you might be seen as a studious person. If you're a runner and you go out for running regularly, that would help to see you as a habit to be seen as a runner. And to create a new desired habit, the critical lesson is that it's small changes that you make. Now, they may seem really unimportant at first, but actually when you make those small changes every day, they can actually create remarkable results over time. So what I want to do is give a little example, first of all, another short story about habits. And this is actually about the British cycling team. So up until about 2003, um, Great Britain had endured nearly 100 years of cycling mediocrity. Basically, we'd won nothing at all. But in 2003, they appointed a new performance director, a guy called Dave Brailsford, and his philosophy was to search for a tiny margin of improvement in everything that the team did. And what he was looking for out of all the activities of the cycling team was a 1% improvement in everything. So that actually was a really long list. But it ranged from things like the seats that were on their bikes that they sat in for the hours that were on there, to the mattresses and to the pillows that they slept in at night time, to their diet, what they ate, what they drank, and also to their clothing. And this work that he did with them for four years between 2003 and 2007, meant that for the subsequent 10 years, a British cycling team on 178 World Championships 66 Olympic or Paralympic gold medals, and they captured five Tour de France victories. Quite amazing. So how did they do it? So what they did was they actually focused on the 1%. And here are some, here are five key things to think about if you actually want to create new habits. Once again, it's not just about the movement in your life, but it might be also around learning a new language. So the first one is actually make sure the change you want to make is for you and not someone else. And this comes back to whether the motivation is external or internal. We are much more likely to sit with something 
if we've decided from our internal motivation that we want to do something or be good at it. Whenever we start to try something different, whatever it might be, there is an uncomfortable part to it. And actually that at times is what stops us from continuing with the new habit because we assume the discomfort will stay with us forever. And in fact, it won't. The discomfort will lessen over time and things will become easier. Then there's changing the environment to find a group or a friend that will help you to stay on track with the new habit that you want to create. So for example, there is a guy over in New York City called, let me just look him up quickly, um, Nick, who set up a fitness group called Nerd, as it's Steve Cam, called Nerd Fitness. And the role of his group was actually to help people get healthy. But what happened was, is that those people who were typically nervous about going to a gym found that by joining this group, they were able to meet other video game lovers. So it actually made it easier for them to start getting fit because they found something in common with some other people in the group. So finding that group or friend can actually help you to stay on track. Another idea is to try habit stacking. And what we mean by that is to pair the new habit that you want to repeat with the current one. So it might be something linked with how you get ready in the morning. Um, you know, if you want to go running at the end of the day or you want to go for a walk and put your trainers on, well, actually, on the way out of the bedroom, pick up your trainers after you finish brushing your teeth. And really simple things. Just look for very simple ways to incorporate new behaviours into your daily habits. And the other bit then is to make the initial habit changes small ones. And you might think 1% what on earth can that do? But actually, if you make 1% change and do it regularly, these can lead to large changes in behaviour over time. So when you do find your 1% in whatever you want to do, the key is get great at it and then find the next 1%. Make that first 1% really easy so that it becomes automatic and move on from there. So whether it's for work or play, think about your 1% and see what new habits you can develop. And that's it for me, Lethem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jane. That was really fantastic. I mean, I loved the, um, it's pinging in my head now at the moment about nerd, um, nerd friends and uh, i need to check that out whatever that website was it might be good for me to, to do that and the, one of the key things that i know i took away from the last time that i heard you speak was the uh the concept of you know <clears throat> earlobes over the shoulders yeah. and keeping your spine nice and strong and uh you know upright and yeah. i've just got a little support now that i use the base of my spine a cushion which actually helps me sit up straight in my chair yeah. And uh, just every hour trying to remind myself to sit back, bring my shoulders down, shoulder blades down the spine, chin up a little bit and just looking upward as well has made such a huge difference yeah. to what was a really kind of probably, you know, my chicken neck, you know, due right. to the telephone, you know, and yeah. it has really removed it, you know, and just trying to build that in. Good. And the other thing I like, because, you know, we do this as part of our daily practice on the PPMA meditation slot is deep breathing, you know, and how yeah. well that can impact and make a difference to people's um, health and well-being. So yeah. loads of great tips there, Jane, as ever. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much.